In the fight for Canada's old growth forests, the battle lines are usually all too clearly drawn. Loggers in the logging industry on one side, environmental protesters on the other. Except on this day, on a road leading to the Clockwatt Forest on Vancouver Island, a logger is arrested. 82-year-old Merv Wilkinson, who along with his wife Anne, is one of the last to hold the bridge. When we saw so many, uh, so many younger people being, uh, being arrested, we decided that it was uh, the time some of the older ones were arrested too, so we made the decision that it was just as good that day as any other. <laughs> it was a spontaneous decision, but hardly a surprising one. Merv Wilkinson is a maverick within the forest industry of British Columbia, and he's been that way almost from the moment he began logging. His protest over clear-cutting has its roots in a forest called Wildwood, just over 100 kilometers from the much-disputed Clockwatt Sound. There are old-growth trees here, and wildlife, and it looks pretty much untouched by man. Until you look a little closer. For this is Merv Wilkinson's forest, and he's been harvesting timber here for more than 50 years, using a practice known as selective logging. Uh, here uh, we have three cedar trees that are getting very large for this area. And so they are now crowding each other. They're, they need elbow room, but mostly in the soil. There's not enough soil here to support three very large trees. So in this form of selection, I propose to take one out and be a benefit to the other two. Selective logging means exactly what it says. A few trees are periodically selected for cutting, and there's minimal impact on the rest of the forest. The continuity of plant species and wildlife is left undisturbed. Clear cutting also means exactly what it says. Large sections of a forest are logged and nothing is left undisturbed. It is this practice that Wilkinson and so many others oppose. But clear cutting is the way most logging gets done in Canada. In BC alone, 90% of the timber harvested is clear cut. The logging industry will tell you it is fast, cost effective, provides for the greatest profits. Wilkinson will tell you that's short term thinking. He believes you're better off in the long run to show the forest a little respect. Trees are a beautiful thing, and uh, you do have a feeling for them. You kind of address the tree, saying, well, I'm, I'm choosing you. You're going to be useful, and you're going to be put to a good purpose. I'm choosing you so that your brothers and sisters can do that much better. A logger taking the time to talk to a tree, let alone the tree he's about to harvest, may seem outlandish and hopelessly outdated in a business where time is money. But Merv is used to standing up for his beliefs and standing out because of them. Hi, how you doing? <laughs> Coffee time? Coffee time with his honey. <laughs> his wife Anne shares his commitment, and she sees a parallel between Merv and the trees. Outside the kitchen window of their home, there's a particular tree which Anne calls Othello. It's about 1,600 years old, and it's been struck by lightning recently. It has this wound all the way down it. And Merv says that because it didn't encircle the tree, it went straight down, it has a good chance to survive. And, and this tree is way above everything else. It stands head and shoulders above the other trees, as it were. And uh, maybe it's a little bit like Merv. Maybe that's why I'm so fond of it. When I started cutting uh, in uh, 1945, this was a, a stand of completely uncut timber. It was virgin timber, in other words, a rainforest. As the larger ones were cut out and thinned out, uh, the, uh, the younger trees have taken over. 
as the uh, greatest number of stems. So there is a big difference in the, uh, in the size of stems, but not in the composition of the forest. Almost vertical that way, but I've got a natural hang with a little bit of wedge. She'll work fine. Merv logs wildwood every five years. It's not a big lot, only 136 acres. In fact, if he was to cut down the entire forest right now, it would only amount to about 454 truckloads of logs. The surprise is that he's logged more than 454 truckloads over the last 50 years. But because he's done it selectively, the forest has a chance to recover. This photograph was taken of Wildwood in 1939. Here's the same area, almost unchanged, today. For Merv, this is not just a matter of preservation. It's economic common sense. If you have a bank account, and you only spend the interest on that bank account uh, and never go above it, you're always going to have the principal. And it's the same in the forest. If you spend the interest, which is your annual growth rate, if you spend the interest, you always have the forest. So that, in a nutshell, is what I've done on Wildwood. And that is why it has so much timber on it today.